Hello and welcome to Python Fundamentals. In this course, we learn the underpinning Python programming skills, preparing for our journey towards mastering the Django framework and the Python programming language. This tutorial is part of a series of tutorials. You can find the link to the whole playlist in the video description. This tutorial is from our Python Programming Fundamentals for Django Developers course, which you can find and purchase on Udemy. You will find all the latest and updated tutorials, as well as resources and assessments to help accelerate your learning of the subject. The link to the course, which will always provide the best price, can be found in the video description. So let's now start from the ground up discussing the function anatomy. So there are two sections of a function. I was expecting this to be highlighted, but that looks like it's been removed. Here we have the function signature. So this top line here is described as the function signature. So notice that it isn't indented, so it will be on the left hand side. It won't be indented at all if it is a block on its own. And you can see that this signature here has a number of different characteristics which we discuss. So the second component of our function is the body. So this is the section down the bottom here that's indented. So anything that is directly underneath and is indented will be considered by Python as part of this function. The function signature can be broken down into four components. Here on the left hand side, we have the define or def keyword to define a new function. Then we have the name of the function. And then in the parentheses here, we have an optional parameter list. At the end of this signature, you can see that we have the colon to indicate the end of the function signature. Let's just introduce this parameter list here. Eventually, we're going to see that we can run these functions. If this function, for example, were to be called and run in our application, we would need to supply two different attributes here in order to actually run this function. So this function here has defined two parameters here. So in order to actually run this function, we would need to actually supply these two parameters. And we'll see some examples shortly of us doing that in order to run this function. If we didn't do that, we'll be provided a, an error um, that we haven't provided these parameters. So think of these parameters as ways of creating variables, which can then be utilized in this function. So you can see here very, uh, you can see here in the gray, we have X and Y inside of this function. This function looks like it, it calculates two numbers. So whatever we, describe X and Y as when we run this function, that can be then utilized as variables inside the body of our function. And we can then access that data that's been passed in to this function to perform calculations or whatever we want to do with that data. The function name. The function name, the rules of the function name are very similar to when we build variables. So we're going to utilize letters, numbers, underscores, and remember that the function cannot begin with a number. So the general convention with building names for functions is that everything is lowercase. Of course, if you're not too sure, go back to the PEP8 style guide for Python and have a look for naming conventions. And inside of here, you'll see a naming convention for functions, say function and variable names. I'm at the bottom here. So go in there, have a little bit read if you like, and that should clear up any uh, questions you might have on function and variable names. And remember, Pepe is a style guideline, so you don't have to follow exactly um, what it describes. You can utilize your own style if you want to, but just make sure throughout your code that you make your code consistent. So the body of the code, as we previously mentioned, this needs to be indented. Now, again, if you check out PEP8, the recommendation is four spaces. But again, you just need to make sure it's consistent. So if calculation had a separate, had a, another space in comparison to the return line here, then that could potentially cause an error. So you need to consistently space all these statements, all the code inside of your function body in the same way. 
So of course, there isn't a limit on the amount of code you can add into the function here. We just have one line, for example, and then this last line, this return line here. So there isn't a limit on how much code you can add or indeed the white space that you can utilize in between the code. You can see here though that the end line here starts with the return keyword and that's followed by the variable that's been generated from the calculations. So when Python reaches the return statement, it will stop running the function and then return the value. Just emphasizing the point regarding indentation here. So this example here, we can see that the calculation line and return line is a bit indented. It is consistently indented, which tells Python that this is part of the function. And you can see here this print statement here it hasn't been indented, which is telling Python that this is not part of the function. So let's just put this into action. So we've got the def keyword and then we've got some sort of name. So regarding naming your function, you want to try and make sure that you name the function something that describes ideally what the function is performing. And that makes your code more readable and potentially then that avoids you having to maybe document your function. Uh, in the same way, but that's not always possible. So always remember to try and avoid utilizing any of the built-in names. So if you wanted to use like print, for example, that wouldn't be necessarily something that you want to do because remember print is a built-in. So you want to avoid naming your function something that has already been defined in the Python built-in functions. So let's go for calculation. Um, doesn't really describe it, but we're just going to showcase this function that performs some sort of calculation. So we pass in our two, or we define here the parameter list of A and B. So we're going to pass in two values into this function. Now, sometimes I like to introduce a function like a box, a box of code. In order to get in the box, you'll need to define the parameters. And these parameters then can be passed in the box as variables, and then they can be utilized inside of the function as variables. So here we have the box opening. So inside the box, we're going to have some code. So let's set up X equals A, uh, A plus B. Okay, so we're going to pass in two numbers. We're going to perform a calculation, and then we're going to return. So the function always returns something. So if we don't define a return, it will return something. But here we want to return, in this case, we want to return the calculation. So we return X. So this is where the code is going to end in terms of this function. Python is then going to return the X, the calculation, back to where we called it. OK, so we will discuss calling the functions later on, but let's just go ahead and run this function. So we need the function name and then we need to pass in two numbers. So let's go for one and two. So if I would run this code, notice that we don't have a return here because all we're doing here is we're just returning. So we're going to need to print the calculation. So we do that, clear, and then try again. And you can now see that we're returning. So this code here is returning the calculation. So if we forget, for example, to pass in two numbers, Let's have a look. You can see that we get a, a type error calculation missing one required positional argument. So a little bit of terminology here. So here we describe these as parameters, but we're passing in what we describe as arguments. So one, number one and three, we're passing in these arguments and these are the parameters that are defined on this function. Now, remember regarding indentation, if I were to indent this, regardless of the line space here, let's just run this. You can see that nothing is happening. So regardless of the, the white space here, just to zoom out a bit, whenever I run this code, Python isn't actually running any code here because we haven't actually called this function. So going back to the idea, I used the word encapsulation. So this code here in the body of our function is encapsulated in this function here. So it isn't actually run by Python when we run this code because we aren't telling Python to run this function. So as soon as we indent back the print, wherever it is, regardless of this white space here, then we go ahead and we can run our function once again. 
So in addition to that, we mentioned the white space within the body. So let's just provide five spaces for the last line of this code here. And we can see that that causes an error, an indentation error, unexpected indent. So we do need to make sure this is all indented correctly and consistently. So if I highlight, you can see here in Visual Studio Code, the four dots representing the spaces. Now remember here I'm using a tab, so I'm tabbing this across. And at the bottom here, remember we briefly mentioned this in a previous tutorial. In Visual Studio Code here, the tabs or spaces are defined at the bottom here, and you can click on this option, and then you can also then define the amount of spaces that you might want to use when you press tab, for example. So you can see here, and by default, spaces has been defined as four. 